I'm Will Jackson, the Director of Engineered Arts, and I'm here today with the fourth prototype of Byron. Uh, Byron is our walking robot R&D project. One of the major improvements is the overall geometry. So we have this uh, now four bar linkage in the knee with actually six bars, um, which means the legs can fold all the way up, pretty much get ankles right up underneath like that. Slightly scary because he's fast. Um, and let's just see that go up and down a moment. What's interesting about this is even though we have three joints moving here, uh, it's actually only one actuator. Uh, so you'll notice this is a bi-articulate robot. Walking is all about falling and balancing and catching yourself. So dynamic walking, running, uh, is all about being able to put your foot on the floor in the right place at the right time. Uh, if you wanted to do that, uh, you can basically aim with a hip motors and you can extend the leg and if the leg extends in a straight line it's very much simpler to hit the floor in the right spot and what you would see is if I held a ruler along this line uh, this is pretty much extending in an exact straight line which means we can set a direction of the hip and we can extend in that direction uh, with a single actuator. So one thing that makes Byron different from other robots is that it's able to follow forces. Uh, basically this gives us variable control of the stiffness in the joints of the robot. This is something that people do all the time. So we're able to just relax. Uh, I can just swing my legs around and this is a very energy efficient way to move. So if we could do this with robots we could expend much less energy. So right now I'd see on this leg it's pretty stiff. Um, what if I want to make this leg uh, much freer to move? I, I could lower the stiffness. So uh, Benny, let's drop the stiffness of this right down. Okay. Um, okay, so now I can just swing this leg and you see it just swings free like a pendulum. Now turn the stiffness back up, please, Benny. Whoa, there you go. I don't really know the position of my legs, but I know how hard I'm pressing against the ground. If I'm very, very rigid, and I'm working in a rigid world, uh, that's a much harder thing to do, because I would precisely have to know my own position and the position of everything in the world. Uh, so it's very important for a human-like robot working in this rigid, unconstrained environment um, to be able to lower its stiffness and be compliant. How do we take this from a demonstration in the lab uh, to an actual practical everyday useful robot? I think we're still four or five years away from that goal. There's some big hurdles to overcome. We've really got to make this safe around people but a lot of that is also to do with sensing. Uh, people are incredibly sensitive uh, to other people around them. They very seldom can collide, you know. So uh, we have to make a robot that can be as sensitive to people as other people are. So I imagine one day you'll see robots like this in public spaces, commercial spaces, where one robot can interact with many people. We need to spread the cost of the robot over many interactions with many people. If it can bring entertainment, amusement, utility to, to many different users, then the cost of an expensive robot like this is justified.